please ask them. So we're going to go through the results of the two surveys. First one, a pastoral survey. Now, remember, the nominations that you provide, because that's what this next step is, you're going to give us nominations for senior pastor, they must match closely with the results of our surveys. That's why we're doing this. Okay? As a reminder, this was a pastoral survey. By the way, there were 66 results of the pastoral survey. This is actually the exact same survey that was taken in 2011. I made a comment for those of you that were there the very first night when Pastor Pepperport was actually still here, and we said well, this is kind of our first informal call meeting. And unfortunately, part of the problem a call committee comes up against is that every congregation wants a 25-year-old man with 40 years of experience. <laughs> In a minute, I'm going to prove that to you. These are our results from 2011. Please notice I've circled everything that's a 7 or below because I considered 8, 9, and 10 significant. That means it got a lot of people's attention. 17 out of 32 of these are 7 and below. Now perhaps I didn't give good enough instructions when I put the survey out. Our survey in 2021 looks like this. Uh, there's the one that's not an 8, 9, or 10. <laughs> what does the congregation want? We want all of it. <laughs> now, as a call committee, what does that mean to me or us? Not much. <laughs> not much. We, we follow the planets to uh, froze uh, instructions. Oh, well, there, there we go. It's always good to know who to blame. <laughs> anyway, we actually were able to decipher some of this stuff, and I want to show you how we did that. First, I want to show you the results difference. You notice the yellows are those that are the same. Okay? Look down here especially. But those are all the same from 2011 versus 2021. So that's after, basically after 10 years of Pastor Peppercorn being here. Here is the data that we actually got. I mean, this looks a little more confusing, which it should. This is more hard data. So again, for, I'm going to just show you the first one. TAC ended, ended up with 40% of the people said 10, 26% said 8. What does that mean? Is that a 9? Is that a 6.5? So we took all of this information and deciphered it, and this is what we came up with. I will tell you that I was not surprised. I don't think anyone on our call committee was particularly surprised. I don't think you're going to be surprised. What was the most important thing in the congregation? Simulation of new members. Now, that's a little surprising, but that basically people felt that had to do with how the pastor reacts to newer people. Preaching content, preaching delivery, teaching the ability in worship. Now, if you were going to get a definition of what a pastor does, I would submit to you that's their job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These were less, okay, so these were basically all tens, or close to tens. These were lesser, and these basically we had so mixed we had as many nines as, as we did twos. So this really didn't help us all. This is like our secondary tier. And if you look, it's basically all the ministry fields. Ministry, children's ministry, youth ministry, young adult ministry, older ministry, family ministry. <coughs> Which again, not necessarily surprising. <coughs> what is the call committee going to focus on as a result of this survey? Preaching content, preaching delivery, teaching ability, worship, and assimilation of new members. <coughs> Make sense? Yeah. What was the next result? The next result was about our congregational survey. If you remember this survey, did I put this this I didn't put it this survey. Uh, if you remember this survey, this talked a lot about what we do. This is the information I'm going to, to submit to you is much more important for the gentleman we call. We'll provide him information about how we view our congregation. It's with a couple of exceptions. 
And those exceptions are the ones that were so overwhelming that it gives the call committee direction. The first question, what is the best, which of the following statements best describes the purpose for which your congregation exists? Again, we had 66 responses for the first survey. We only had 44 for the second survey. Out of that, 89% believe our purpose is to preach and teach God's word in truth and purity and ministry to sacraments. The second result, provide a place for God's people to worship. On the written comments, a lot of people said, we're assuming that the word is preached in the purity and ministry and the sacraments, and that was their, their follow-up. And so a lot of this, I'm going to argue, probably could have fit right in there. But again, overwhelmingly of the 24 responses indicated that that's our purpose. Which again, falls in line with what I would argue is our purpose. And we all agree to that. And that's what Holy Cross has been about for 30 some years now. Question number four I thought was really important, or we all, I keep saying I, I apologize to my confidence, we all thought was important. <laughs> All congregations experience conflict. Which of the following best describes the level of conflict in your congregation currently? Please choose only one. 91% felt that the level of conflict in our congregation is low or very low. Okay? Let's be proud of that. That's you guys. It's not leadership. <laughs> uh, as much as it is the congregation itself. And the only other, other, other response is moderate. We have no highs or no very highs. The third one of this survey, which I'm going to talk to you about, by the way, I can tell you already, I'm really worried about time. I'm going to have plenty of time. <laughs> we made him kind of just now. Yeah, I got rid of a lot of slides. Which of the following ten, what, which of the following best describes the style of worship you prefer? 96% prefer traditional style of worship utilizing a center hymnal, hymnody, and either organ or piano. <laughs> Pastor Meyer likes to call me a legalist. <laughs> when you have someone complain to you about why we don't do other kinds of service, ask them why they didn't fill the survey. Okay? Because 96% of the people who filled out the survey said, this is what we want. So this is what the call committee is going to do is look for a pastor that appreciates traditional style of worship utilizing center, food, hymnal, entity, and either organ or piano. You know, Heather, I really like you being here because I can kind of at least someone asking you a question. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so 96% traditional. What about the 4% that would prefer a blended element? Is there any address in that at all? Can go well, when you take the fact that there's, again, this is a sample, and you understand samples probably more than most people here. So basically 96%, so basically you're saying that if you take 100 people in the congregation, 96 want a traditional service, four people would like a blended service. I don't know about you, but that would not be overly a concern to me. However, I'm just saying, how are you going to listen to the four people that do have that concern? We did. This is it. Again, but, and again, what I said when maybe... No, maybe just by asking a question doesn't necessarily mean that you've listened to their well, concerns. Okay, before you got here, okay. one of the things I said was, this is more to provide for the new pastor for information. This is not for me or you to argue about whether there should be blended service. I'm not. I, I just asked I'm about just saying, concern. this is what we're going to provide to the pastor. And that pastor, you can ask the question, what are you going to do with the four people that want to this service? Or somewhere else? Pastor <laughs> <laughs> Meyer. So, when, when doing a similar kind of survey, uh, years ago, that four was almost 40%. But over the 10 years, um, because we had an identity in worship, that loyal opposition that I had before I retired <coughs> all drifted off to other places. Pardon? I said, that's not good. Well, you know. 
there in other Lutheran churches, um, particularly one, which will not be named, um, but, yeah, they saw what the senior pastor was like and said, we're not going to get what we want. We're not going to get this new pastor to change. So, another, when we call a pastor who prefers this, you'll probably work with them to try to understand why historic liturgy is the way to go. And if they say, no, I can't live with that, unfortunately, it will be a parting of the ways. <coughs> there are a number of us who came from a different church that had the uh, intent of promoting that other style of worship and we prefer the traditional style and that's why a lot of us came from that facility over to Holy Cross. And personally, and this is just a personal opinion, I, I would feel bad if we went down that other road because I think it would uh, diminish the, the holy service that we traditionally know and love and, and are accustomed to. And go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, after you. I'll get back to my ways. Go ahead. But, but anyway, that's, that's a personal opinion on my part. It doesn't mean that that's what you guys should believe or anything else. And when on the call committee, we are going to be utilizing the results of the survey to direct us in the, uh, in the direction that we're going to go for calling a new pastor. Thank you. So, starting as a missionary at large, the missionary large is not to form the identity of those who gathered. Once they called me as the pastor, and I was no longer the missionary large, I spent probably 14 years trying to shape the identity of this congregation as biblical, confessional, liturgical. Having great opposition in what one time I left, only to find out that I had a district that was going to try to push me to form an identity that I was not comfortable with. Came back and we struggled to finally shape our identity as a congregation that follows a historic liturgy. And that's going to be our identity. That is our identity now. <laughs> to follow up, I do prefer a traditional style, just to put that out there for the record. I just wanted, like, as we answer this survey and identify that we take in, like, everyone who did, like, answer since it is the same. We took them in. Do you see this right here? Yes, that's why I brought that's, that. That's them. Ready? I think it's important to restate again what Pastor Meyer pointed out, that, um, the people who may want more of a blended service, because this didn't occur to me, that they'll be addressed, they just won't be ignored. It, it, that hadn't occurred to me. So that's great that whoever comes in would potentially talk with those people and explain why um, our preferred style is traditional, as opposed to just ignoring them. So. Correct. And again, the, the point that uh, Jerome made, I think, is again, th these surveys were to give the people that you elected or chosen or agreed to on the call committee to look for the next senior pastor based on the information that you've given us. This is the information you've given us. This is what we're going to look for. <coughs> Stephen. Were demographics studied in this? How many young people answered the survey? There are no demographics in this. In fact, half, over half of them. All Twenty-two of those I could figure out by their email. Twelve of them I have no email and no address. So twelve of them are completely anonymous. Right. Well, just the 
being a scientist and understanding statistics a lot, the demographics can have a lot to do with what the results are. Yes, and again, being a scientist, you understand that sample size survey is yeah. important, and 44 mm -hmm. of the sample size No, no, survey. I understand. This is significant. Yeah. No, if, no, if, so that's about it. Yeah. So a significant I, amount of us wanted traditional surveys. Yeah, it's, it, uh, honestly, I was a little disappointed that the 44 was a little closer to 66, mm -hmm. and it would have better information, but that's what we got. <coughs> um, our information. Oh, many people, if you have that one contemporary service, there's no agreement on what contemporary means. And with our new hymnal, relatively new, we have songs in there that might be used by contemporary musicians, and ones that have been recently written, and you can go still talk to the author of those. Mm -hmm. And so we are being, in the sense of the word contemporary, to an extent. And again, that we are here to to discuss whether or not we're going to do contemporary or not. This is the results of the survey, which overwhelmingly indicate to the call committee we are going to look for a gentleman that works at a traditional style of worship, and that is what he does. I've done the math, and if we do a contemporary mixed service once every two years, that should address the problem. Okay, <laughs> that's the statistics. <laughs> there you go. Christmas Eve early service. <laughs> 6 a.m. 6 a.m. That will adjust it. Okay, summary of the surveys of results one or two. Holy Cross is a confessional, surgical, biblical, and <laughs> church. Of all, we want to shepherds who can preach and teach. That's a surprise, right? What's the definition of a pastor? A preacher and a teacher. We want a traditional liturgy where the sacrament is rightly celebrated at every divine service. <clears throat> By the way, I've not handed them out, but if you'd like a copy of all 14 questions and the results, I have them over here. I've got eight copies, if you'd like to look through all of them. I want to talk about a, a potentially big concern we have. Yeah. And that's housing. Sooner or later, we're going to have to deal with this animal. We are not going to necessarily deal with it today. Because one of the last slides will tell you that whatever we do has to be approved by the voters. So we can talk about it, but the results have to be voter approved. I want to talk about you and give you a couple statistics. Some of you people may not be aware. Excuse me, to be honest, I wasn't aware. Was it? I used to live in Rockland. I don't know how many of you guys know that. Um, many, many moments ago, I lived here for 10 years when I first went to Holy Cross. Prices of Houses in Holt and the Rockland, California. <laughs> By the way, I thought it was a little bit funny. It's going to be good because you're going to need to laugh at this subject because it's going to be the bottom. Uh, bad news, that's just the law. Uh, he's telling his wife. <laughs> Average home prices in Rockland over the last 10 years have gone 10 years, folks, 10 years. Average price in Rockland 10 years ago in 2011 was $270,000. Roughly, that's about, you know, roughly about when Pastor Pepper came, Pepper Court came here, that's what figures are. Five years ago was $430,000. Today it's $650,000. Average. average sold house in Rockland. What does that mean? In August 2011, the median listing price in Rothman was $639,000, trending up 18.89% or almost 20% year after year. Every year it goes up 20% almost. The median home sold was $650, so the median <coughs> listed was $639, the median sold was $650, was that day right away? Okay. Seller's market. Big time. Okay, I'll read this one because you can't read the bottom one again. Can't you see us sitting here every morning with our coffee? <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Gazing out the window and worrying about how to pay the mortgage. <laughs> this is, I put this up because this is what we do not want our next pastor to be doing. Sitting with his wife, drinking coffee, looking out the window and worrying about how they're going to pay their mortgage. 
How much would a family need to make to buy a $650,000 home? Rule of thumb, you can borrow up to 3% of your income, which includes everything, mortgage, auto loans, student loans, blah, blah, blah. So if you had no other debt, zero debt, and you had a 20% down payment, which almost every pastor can come up with 130,000 cash, <laughs> I guarantee you that. And if he could, he would only have to make about $175,000 a year to pay for a $650,000 house. You guys know what we pay our senior pastor? Not bad. Not even close. What about if his wife worked? The two of them? Not even close. Possible solutions. I'm only going to raise these up. I have a lot of time today. You guys are not asking me questions. I guess. You gave us pretty clear directives on you. <laughs> Down payment assistance. That's one option. Many churches have used that. Grass Valley used that. The other one is equity sharing. Okay, down payment assistant can take a couple forms. Talk more about those in a minute. Equity sharing is the one that I think holds possibly the best interest for us. That is where we own part of the house and the pastor owns part of the house. And again, this has been used in our district. In fact, we've got a copy. I think I wasn't here last week. I think Pastor Lang, or President Lang, talked about last week. We have a copy of that agreement that was just recently used in the district. And again, uh, that allows um, the pastor to be able to afford a house because Holy Cross would own half of it, half, ten percent of it, fifteen percent. And when the house is sold, we get ten or fifteen percent of the equity. Again, for the next pastor. <clears throat> I don't think I will be here in ten years. I just don't think God has got this plan for me to be here ten years from now. But if it is, I don't want to be on the call committee. <laughs> because that house is probably going to be $800,000. Or more. Okay. Any solution would have to be approved by the voters prior to offering it to our call pastor. I think that's my last slide. Okay. Any questions? Heather? How do you feel that your presentation of the survey results went? She wants to know how I thought the presentation went. It went. It went. <laughs> Thanks for from. Uh, thank you, sir. I, I I just want to review a couple things. Um, when I was teaching in Kenya, I realized that when I was dealing with English as a second language, it was incumbent to make very careful <coughs> usage of terms. Um, because not everyone understood them exactly the way I did. And uh, when we talk about our call process, I'm assuming the chairman of the call committee meant um, the process that Holy Cross is using, um, the process, not our call. God uses Holy Cross Lutheran Church to call the pastor he desires to be here. God uses. The church is not our church, never has been, never will be, never ought to be. Um, we have a debt because we chose to have a debt, not because Christ chose us to have a debt, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I just, I just want us to think again in terms of this is God's process. Um, there is no perfect human process for doing this. Never has been, never will be. I've been in a church body in Kenya where the bishop or archbishop appointed pastors to be in various places. Um, uh, we have that in the United States too in, under various Lutheran denominations. Um, this, uh, what I would call parochialism of the local congregation making all the decisions because it's our church. Um, that that's not biblical brothers and sisters so let's not talk that way let's talk about how God is going to use us to call the next senior pastor here in whatever way he chooses 
and um, if it if it is uh, the senior pastor that he desires for us, whether it's to chasten us or whether it's to bless us, will be uh, have a lot to do with how we go about the process. So. Um, just throwing that out there as an observation. And by the way, I'm one of those bad people who didn't fill out the second survey um, because I didn't think there was a need to. Anyone else? What are the next steps that, like, now that you're having this survey, like, how has that affected the call committee? Well, again, the call committee, which is dealing with the call process, <coughs> needed to have the congregation's input and to know how to look for the next senior pastor. During the call process, which was we are involved with, it recognizable understanding what Pastor Froze is talking about, certainly ends up with simple people ultimately saying, we think this is the man. At that point, God really steps in even more so because he may or may not be the man who may or may not agree. The next steps for us will be <clears throat> opening up the call nomination. That is our church's nomination process. I have some forms up here, some hard copies, and as I mentioned earlier, you can go to the website and do it online, print it out, or email it to me, or anybody, hand it to any of the call committee. But we do have to have them in our hand by next two Sundays. So it'll open up on the 31st, maybe a week off here. It opens up on the 31st, and two weeks after that, November 14th, we have to have them. The call committee is going to meet again that week, and we will go over the list that we've been that we've received, and we will compare them to what you've given us, i.e. the results of the survey. So, again, I use this example, it's a fairly, I think it's a good example because it's not too controversial. If there's a pastor out there that only does contemporary service and you've nominated him, he probably won't make it into the mix of the men that we look for. Okay. Oh, actually, Renee was one bit ahead of you, Jim. Renee? I, I, um do you have a, what percentage of the possible people who could have filled out the, the survey were there? Well, if we had 60 people, we had 40, out of how many would, what is our number? Our, our numbers right now, we, we worship about 150 people a week. Thank you. Okay, but again, if you, you need to understand, demographics of those 150 people, probably 20 or 30 <laughs> switch between every other week. So it's not the exact same amount of 50. So there's probably closer to 180, 200 people that could have filled out, that come to church often enough that could have and should have filled out the form. But again, if you understand sampling and, and actually if you said understand um, surveys, <coughs> one of the things we talked about in the call committee, what's a good percentage? Actually, a surveyist will tell you that if they get 10% response, they're tickled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's surprising. The numbers are surprising. And again, remember from the science, we're using this as a sample, which means we extrapolate the numbers to the larger group. That's why it's important for you to fill out the surveys. Jim. <laughs> Do you have a list of uh, a president of the district um, pool and a list of resumes? No. And we do not get one, we don't, that is not the way the process works. Quickly, the way the process works, um, <clears throat> uh, following down the line of following Heather's question, the next steps. So on the week of November 15th-ish, call committee will get together and we'll pull all the names we've got together. I'm assuming, this is assumptions, okay, because I haven't seen them. We're gonna get 10, 15 names. Of those 10, 15 names, we're going to do our investigation and look at these people. Uh, say, there's, say, there's, say there's 10. It's easier to work with math. There's 10. Two of the people we say, this guy does not meet any of our survey qualifications. We have eight that do. What's the next step? We take those eight and send them to the district. 
what does the district do with them? They took it, take a look at them, and normally they throw a couple out or something. Pastor Lang, I don't think it's going to be very overly anxious to throw names out, but it is his job to put names in. That's where those names come in. He's aware of gentlemen that would meet what he understands of Holy Cross, and he would add those names to our list at the same time we're still sitting and waiting because the next thing the district president does is get us sets and piffs. And again, if you've been to the call meetings, I've talked to you a little about the call sets and piffs. Uh, set is a self-evaluation tool. Piff is a personal information file. Form. 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 Personal information form. Basically, it's one is the district president says this is who the guy is. The other one is this is the guy says this is who I am. Here's what I'm looking for. We get the pips and the sets related to Dave Smith because we asked for it. Or we get one from John Smith because Pastor Lang added that to our list. At that point, the call committee starts looking through all this stuff. Today's age of technology, one of the things we will do is we will go online. Almost all of these gentlemen will have sermons and services online. We will look at them, make sure again, they meet our qualifications. Ultimately, the call committee will come up with one name. What does the call committee do with that one name? They don't do anything with it because they can't because the call is extended from the congregation. So at a, at a voters meeting, and again, I would be who you to be at that meeting. At that meeting, we will say, we think John Smith is the one that God wants to be here. Okay? Now, prior to that, someone would ask me about interviews. It's possible that if we like John and Dave and Bob and really don't know the difference, the call committee may in fact have interviews with that person. Generally on the phone, we really are in a position to call them and bring them here, but we don't know what's going to happen. Again, all this is conjecture as the process goes down. But somehow, the call committee will end up with one name we will bring to the voters. <coughs> uh, actually, Walt and then Heather. Well, one of the things that uh, I see here that uh, in terms of the support we have from our district is way better than it has been in the past. Uh, Pastor Lang was here. He saw how we operate. He knows, you know, he's been here, he's preached, he's seen our service. He knows of us anyway, and he knows of the prior, prior pastors that have been here. He's not going to try to throw somebody in the mix that doesn't meet our, our, our guidelines. This is not, he's not in, that's not what he's trying to do. And I think you got that from him when he was here last week. In addition, we have Pastor Bumps, you know, who fits all the criteria that we have. I mean, he knows us, and he's close by. He know he was good friends with our pastor, so I think we're in a very good situation here from a call committee uh, prospect. And once again, we're following the survey. <laughs> We've charged each other. There's nobody politicizing here. That's you know if. If I start going, well, we need Billy Bob, because he's the guy, the other people on the call committee are shutting me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's we've charged each other to do that, because we're following exactly what you have told us. Nothing else. Thank you, Well, That's a good point. Actually, we, the, the call committee has not discussed any names at all so far, not even behind closed doors informally. Yeah. Okay, that's not our job right now. Um, also, another thing I want to bring up before I get to you, Heather, is that we're Lutherans. Whoever the next senior pastor is, he will not be Pastor Pepper. That will cause consternation, concern, and issues. Pray about it. This is just reality. Okay? Pastor Peppercorn is gone from our midst. The next man that we call, we need to support. Even if he's not the candidate that you wanted, it's the one God wanted. 
Heather, then you go. Uh, this may be a little premature, but for the call to be issued, the voters need to vote to extend the call, correct? Correct. So I did, I wasn't here in person, but I did watch the, the time with Pastor Lang and Pastor Bob. So there were limited windows where it was considered, considerate to issue that call? If I can yes. address that right away, yes. We certainly are not going to want to, to ask a man during Advent or the middle of Lent to leave his congregation and come to ours. Okay? I'm not sure we would want a pastor that was willing to leave his congregation during Advent or Lent and come to ours. Okay, so yes. So my follow-up was that if a meeting needs to happen and we need to be considerate of not inviting someone during Lent, like if if things were on a super fast track, we would need to have a, a voters meeting around the call in January, correct? Again, the problem with putting dates out is that if it doesn't work, people are going to hang us. So, no, I, yes. I'm not hanging. I was just no, no, you know, I, no, I, no, I from what was being communicated. I appreciate the question. Informally, the call committee has discussed all of these dates, where we're we going, what we're doing. Again, guys, you know, Pastor Fro's point, the Holy Spirit's in charge of We can call 10 people. If God doesn't want them, we could be doing this four years from now. You guys need to understand that. That's a real possibility that our first or second chosen person isn't God's choice and he doesn't come here and a year from now a tired call committee <laughs> chairman will be up here talking about where we're going so again good points we probably won't do it in Advent again if you listen to my uh, if you caught my dates hopefully Late November, we're going to send this information to the district. Four to six weeks is warp speed for them to get us back to sets. That's okay if it gets us through Advent. And if we have them by early January, which would be super speed, we would have the voters meeting and potentially be able to make a call before Ash Wednesday. In fact, the call committee on one of the papers I've given you, we've given two hard dates. Ash Wednesday starts here, which means we're going until after the end of it. Right? So again, yes, we're very aware of that. You're exactly right. There are key dates to begin. Let me point to Pastor Fro's comment. We aren't in charge of this thing, okay? We can run and make moves and do this stuff. We are not in charge of this stuff. <laughs> Phil. What I've heard from my memory of the last time we went through this call process is when the name came to the congregation, we had more than one name and we voted more than once. But I heard you say this time is we get one name and we vote. That's correct. Is that a both, change in the call process? Both of those are called, both of those are correct statements. You need to understand what's in our bylaws. Our bylaws are not specific. Uh, your call committee chairman, again, I, this is my fourth chair of the call committee. My preferred way, because, and I'm going to tell you why, since you brought it up. Here's the problem with when you bring three names to a call committee. Or to the, the, oh, the voters meetings. Yeah. Jerome really likes Bob. Donna really likes Dave. Diane really likes Steve. And you're going to ask them to vote on which one. Now, no matter who comes out, she's unhappy, he's unhappy, she's unhappy, he's a. We don't do that. I'm going to argue to you the way I've proceeded in our past back in New Mexico when I ran it. Again, we bring one name. You have tasked us with doing the work and coming up with a name at that name, at that voters meeting. That man may not be, voters may not agree to that guy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's how the system works. Dennis. Um, thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just said thank you. Okay. Um, just to get some clarification, um, we are not going to blindly bring a name to them. We are going to... <laughs> we are going to do a lot of due diligence. I've told the call committee, and they are very much aware that so far what we've done is check boxes off. That's all we've done. Okay? 
The hard work starts when we start getting names and we have to do the best we can. Again, even this stuff is pretty perfunctory, right? You count, you count squares, you count up numbers. That's, again, as um, Walt said, we haven't made any decisions about anything. I mean, we have not made a decision about anything so far. Because all we did is ask you what you think, you've told us, and we've looked at the numbers, that's it. Where the hard work's gonna come, where Dennis is alluding to is, we will have to go through these certs, these sets, I'm sorry, I didn't get rid of the cert. These sets and these PIFs, and we will be looking online at hours of sermons. Now again, we will do our due diligence we will do the best we can. We will ask Dave, who we happen to know from long ago that happens to sit in the congregation, what their thoughts are of this person. Any piece of information that can help the call committee that's available to us, we will use. It will be a lot of work. We will not blindly bring a name. We will bring a name that the seven of us agree appears to be the God, guy God's pointing to. And there's lots of reasons. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the guys I really wanted to put on the list would have been perfect for us, I think. <laughs> Took a call two years ago. I was not aware of that. Two years isn't long enough. Okay? Not fair to him, not fair to his congregation. God didn't want that guy here. I did. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Tina. So at the voters meeting, <clears throat> two questions. So at the voters meeting, you bring one before the voters. Should we say no, which probably won't happen, but do you have a backup, and a backup, and a backup, and a backup, or do we have to... You want, when too many backups? Okay. So typically, we have three names. We will, the call committee will get down to basically three names, and then, then we will decide on the one name. Why do we do three names? Because good possibility that for number one, God doesn't want that guy. And for whatever reason, one, the voters don't agree, two, we call me to come, we go back to two or three. Dennis? Just as, as I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. I, I meant, oh, sorry. let's say at the voters meeting, we're like, nope, we don't like number one. Do you say, okay, here's number two? Nope. So we, you, so at the voters meeting, you haven't really, do you interview these people one at a time, or do you interview all three before the as I, and again, sorry. as I said, <coughs> Now, now we're running out of time. Yeah. Okay. The process is, we will get these names, we will look at them. We will make a, perf a quick, perfunctory decision on some people that clearly don't make the mix. Anybody that's close goes to the district. The dump stick gives us pimps and sets. We start reviewing and working on all these stuff with the idea in our mind, we've got to get down to three people. If necessary, because we still aren't clear, we may in fact have phone interviews. If necessary, we may call a person or persons that we think and invite them here for a meeting. That's all down the line. I can't answer those questions. It's unknown at this point. Does that answer your team? No. So you have to have a voters meeting. Like if we say no on candidate number one, you are all back, the call committee's back to the drawing board, and then we have another meeting. That's correct. Except okay. that, we're going to draw, that we're going back to the drawing board, but the drawing board now is two names. Because we're going to start with, we are going to come up with three top names. Okay. You say no to number one. We're going to go back and say, okay, now what are we going to do? we got numbers, names two and three. Which one do you want? We're going to talk about, we're going to discuss this. Says, okay, we're going to come back to the voters meeting and say, okay, here's our number one guy. Okay, second question. There are six That's numbers on the questions. call committee. Three I had to clarify the seven. other ones. Seven. Seven. Okay, so it's like majority vote? Or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Is that guys? laughs> I just want to jump in about passion. No. Casting we lots, don't do like and again. The apostles did. If the if, if the Holy Spirit wants to stand, it better be all of us agree to this guy. Okay. Okay. I mean, we are not going to say four, four, and three against. We aren't going to do that. Rick, if I may just comment, since you asked, um, <clears throat> uh, I am not aware of a call process that only brings forth one name. Um, this is foreign to me. Uh, and I served as circuit counselor slash now circuit visitor in about five different uh, open call processes. John Paul has as well. Um, 
I, in the past, what has happened is the call committee has brought three names and they have said, this is the one with great unanimity that we believe best would serve Holy Cross Lutheran Church or whatever the church is. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, first of all, we're in short time, I'm sorry. And the difference is, and the process that we've used, me being out of state, is we've had that same argument and said, what's the difference between that and bringing one name and keeping the other two names to ourselves until they say one isn't our guy? Once a call committee brings a name, it is almost 90% that that's what goes. And well, I think, I think. So the thing, the, but again, but what, okay. it, what it doesn't do, Pastor Fro, is pit one guy in the congregation against the other because I really want this guy and I really want this guy. The choice now is yes or no to this guy. Uh, actually, Phil was next. It, is there a time between the call committee presenting the name and the, uh, the voters meeting, or is it all on the same day? No, we will try to submit that name, get that name out to you, with what information we can. Understand that PIFs and sets are not available to everybody, but we'll give you general information so that you can do it. expected to have a gap between the two. Yes. Thank you. Um, actually, Walt and then Pastor Meyer, and we're way late, guys. Okay, before everybody leaves this room, I have one quick announcement. So whatever. Pastor Mark. Yeah. Along with Pastor Pearl, I've never known of one name coming forward. Ten years ago, we had two names. And there were people that were almost divided between the two names. But once one name was selected, we called for a unanimous vote for that one name. And that is how we extended the call. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Mar. Any other last really quick questions? We are way late. Pam. That's not really a question. I just really want to thank Rick for, um, he has put in uh, hours and hours and hours of work doing all of this, you know, gathering of data, putting the slides together, keeping us all on track. And it's, it's not an easy job. I mean, I would, it's like a full-time job for you lately. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just really appreciate everything that he's done to keep us all organized mm -hmm. and up to speed. And so thank you very much. Um, yeah. um, very quickly, some very exciting news. Yay. David Ho and Seth uh, have helped us. Uh, your building committee people, remember we're working on building, in two weeks, on <clears throat> November the 7th at 2, we will have architect's renderings of our possible new church. And it's very exciting. What day of the week is that, Walt? The Sunday, Sorry, the 7th, you. at 2 p.m. Thank you. The architect will be here and present. So, so it's a meeting. Right? Uh, you want it's, to it's, come? Yeah. Awesome. 2 o'clock. So <coughs> nothing to vote on. All we're going to do is show you where we are in progress. Close the bread. Um, Pastor, might we close the prayer, please? Grace of all, Lord, just in question, love you on the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who was born. Amen. Hey, Samuel, you've been by seven. I'm going to stay and clean up the table. Yeah. 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 Yeah.